until now I have been in Washington, D.C. as one of the leading organizers of the anti-communist liberation movement abroad. Thank you very much. You, in your statement, what is written uh, in Slovak, you explain that the Jewish in Slovakia couldn't take an active part in uh, the resistance movement because they were more oppressed than any other and they were much more uh, 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 watched, controlled than any other. I wonder if perhaps there were other reasons too. Uh, it's, uh, I want to ask you, uh, I saw uh, on a couple other reasons, uh, I want to ask you each one, and uh, if you do not agree, it, uh, I just want to know what is your opinion on it. Do you think that the uh, military leaders who were part of this resistance movement perhaps didn't believe to Jewish as civilians or even because the name of Jewish as a, a people who do not like to fight. You mean uh, during the uprising? No, uh, earlier. Earlier, in uh, 43. You remember I mentioned to you uh, to, uh, the first time uh, the priest Father Pozdech. Yes. And this inquiry by him that uh, how fair the resistant movement is ready to help to Jewish uh, uh, prisoners to uh, get weapons and if they are taken in, uh, in account. And uh, as far as uh, Dr. Oskar Neumann, who was uh, uh, who made this uh, uh, inquiry by Father Pozdech, uh, explained to me uh, the answer was the Jewish are the Jews are taken in account, but they w would not uh, be activized until the time will be. Uh, how to say, ready for everybody. I would like to stress in this connection that in 1943, the Jews were completely excluded from the Slovak armed forces, right. legally. Right. Therefore, they couldn't participate actively in the armed forces. No, I, I do not ask about the armed forces. I ask why I said the armed forces, eh, as you know, better than me. There were a couple of colonels eh, in, in the leading eh, places of the resistance movement. And I wonder if these people didn't like to activize the Jews. No. Uh, in the resistance, yes, the I know. Uh, in the resist, in the underground movement, uh, we it means the political as well as military elements. We counted only by those uh, people who were uh, in the armed forces, mm -hmm. because the whole plane of uh, the national uprising was based uh, on the idea that in given time the Slovak army will be engaged against the Germans. Yeah. It, it means those people who were already in the army. Yeah. Because the Jews were excluded from the army, mm -hmm. uh, we counted on Jews only as, um, as uh, civil elements or as participants in the 
uh, so-called partisans groups, mm -hmm. but not in the army. And not in uh, cells, in the underground cells who were organized uh, through Slovakia in 44. Uh, cells, uh, Bunti. Yes. Uh, it they, was they, they, not they counted in these cells. Oh, it was quite, uh, quite uh, natural that everybody was welcomed in the underground uh, groups. It means uh, Jews and no Jews, everybody. Do you remember uh, such Jews who participated in this underground cell before the uprising? Uh, by name? Yeah, perhaps even by name, if you can. Uh, unfortunately, it is uh, difficult for me because <laughs> we uh, tried to be as uh, discreet as possible, uh, possible. I see. I and see. therefore only few na names were known to us. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, am, uh, I was aware and familiar uh, that many Jews participated in the underground, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I don't know who... Uh, Do you know about the cell in uh, the Novaki camp? I heard about it. During the time or uh, afterwards? Yeah, I, uh, I am not quite sure whether it was uh, during World War II or immediately after, but I heard about uh, some underground group in uh, Novakis. Camp. So you cannot uh, say me anything about uh, the inquiry of this group to get uh, uh, weapons from Zemanske Kostolani, the military camp. I just heard that there were some connections between the army and partisan units yeah. and the camp, but I am not able to go ah, into, into specifics. Other, uh, in this same di uh, direction, the uh, other point what I would ask is, have you some feeling that perhaps Jews were excluded uh, by for the uh, anti-Semitic reason of some participants of yeah. the underground? No, the uh, exclusion of the Jews. If, if it was, perhaps it wasn't, but I just, you know, I, I give I think point. it was a part of the anti-Semitism without any further uh, reason. You wouldn't say that was anti-Semitism in, in the underground uh, movement? Aha, no. uh -huh. you wouldn't say that. No. Other reason, you see... I, I, meant, I meant the Slovak government. The yeah, no I, no, no, I, I mean uh, the underground. Yeah. You see, other thing is what I talk, as you know, to many people about this. I made uh, many interviews, and my feeling were my feelings were that most Jews participated in the communist part of uh, the resistance movement and less in the so-called, uh, uh, how to say, democratic. democratic part. Yeah, I would say in Slovak, Opsianski uh, uh, block, but yes. I was yes. democratic part. Yeah. And it's true. It's true. Uh, how would you explain this? I think that uh, the Jews were so disappointed with the whole situation that they were much closer to a more radical trend as, for instance, the uh, leftists, and particularly the communists, were, mm -hmm. than uh, toward the uh, more liberal and uh, democratic trends. I see. And would you say that this Jewish inclination made to them uh, some troubles to be, pa uh, uh, to be included 
by the democratic wing because they were suspected to be left leftists? No, no. We, uh, we didn't make any obstacles to them. And we were uh, aware of, uh, of their, it means Jews, Jewish sympathies toward our, uh, toward our movement. And if they, it means the Jews, had an opportunity during uh, World War II, particularly between 39 and 43, to join us, uh, I am sure that they would join us. Why not in 44? You Be say particularly in 1943. Why not? Because in 44 they already joined us in the Slovak National Uprising. I, I mean, but uh, you see, Mansis is May or June 44. Yes. Uh, at that time, uh, in my opinion, the Jewish population of Slovakia already were, was engaged in, uh, in, uh, uh, in an active uh, participation uh, of the underground, particularly as far as the uh, so-called guerrilla partisan mm -hmm. movement was concerned. As far as political underground was concerned, uh, we were still in a beginning stage of development. It means that the whole setup was not quite developed. You probably know Professor Koch, the yes. physician, yes. the surgeon. Yes. Yes. He wrote a book, Justitia. Yes. You will remember this book. Uh, unfortunately, I, I hadn't. Uh, you, you, it, but you I know. would be very interested. Yes. It, was, it was published in 47. And he was, of course, the democratic wing. Yes. And in this book, he attacked severely the communist, uh, communist wing as uh, how he described them. Uh, they want to store the fame or, or the good name what they, they didn't do. do actually was uh, 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 by the democratic wing. He actually describes the uh, help of Jewish physicians, especially in, in the Eastern Slovakia, who helped by, uh, by medical medicals and such thing to the partisans. It was at this time Shukayev uh, yes, yes. Uh, group in the Eastern Slovakia, what was probably the first uh, partisan group in Slovakia. Do you remember something about this? Uh, I know that uh, particularly Jewish uh, doctors were very much helpful, but uh, I cannot mention any specific name. I see. I just know generally that, uh, for instance, Koch and others were very much engaged in uh, underground, and I am sure that he was not uh, allowed. Yeah, you see, I would take the same question from the other point of view. Was this a uh, Slovak population, or I would say uh, more specific, the Slovak anti-fascist population, and, uh, and uh, activists in anti-fascist uh, uh, movement, were they upset uh, with the Jews that they went to transport, went to uh, deep deportation without any resistance? That they want, went, as you as, uh, describe, as ships uh, to... You mean the Jews without the resistance? Yeah. Oh, no, it cannot be said. It cannot be said. As I uh, know, the Jewish people, it means the 
those who were deported or were intended to be deported, that they did their best in order to avoid, to avoid this terrible fate. Yeah, but uh, perhaps I wouldn't say uh, uh, steps to avoid these steps, this uh, this uh, deportation. But I would I more ask about uh, why they. If, if you think that they could make a forceful, you know, a, a resistance. resistance, it was impossible. You think it so? It was humanly impossible. Why? Because they hadn't anything. No arms, no uh, allies, no any other means to resist successfully. They were under arrest. They were uh, controlled by armed uh, guards and uh, policemen, gendarmes and others. How can civilians uh, without anything resist mm -hmm. this, uh, this forcible so deportation? It was, it was humanly impossible. I see. So for my, how to say, general questions, I would ask a couple of specific questions. Uh, first of all, is this a thing, this a Zebrin case? Uh, what was it actually? Do you remember? Yes, uh, Dr. Michal Zebrin, a former attorney at law, at first in Brezno, not Rono, and then in Topolchani, uh, was engaged in uh, underground movement. Particularly, he, uh, he was engaged in espionage activities uh, for the Czechoslovak liberation movement abroad in London. Uh, he uh, organized an underground group which uh, gave him necessary military, economic and political information. Mm -hmm. He gathered those information and then sent uh, them abroad. Mm -hmm. Besides, uh, he often traveled to Budapest or uh, I think also to Belgrade in order to have contacts with uh, agents of uh, this espionage network. And then uh, he was compelled to escape from Slovakia. I think it was in 1940. He left for Yugoslavia, then Turkey near east, and uh, then to London. And during his uh, exile, he had contact he, with his collaborators and friends in Slovakia. Then I think uh, in the first half of 1941 the Slovak security authorities uh, knew about it and started to arrest the participants or collaborators of uh, Mr. Zibrin. In this connection also I was arrested, although I hadn't any uh, direct contact with Zibrin, who wasn't considered by me as too responsible man. Uh, 
In July 1941, a large group of uh, underground uh, workers were arrested. And in 1942, tried. Mm -hmm. When I was arrested in Bratislava and then tried, I uh, realized that several Jewish people also participated in this activities and they were also arrested and tried and sentenced, I don't know how many of them and uh, what kind of sentences they uh, got, but they participated. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you see, in fact, this is a good example what I wonder, for you emphasize, and many people they have the same arguments as you use in Israel too, if I talk to Israeli, uh, Israelis uh, originally from Slovakia and ask them why Jewish didn't participate so active or if they participate. They usually answer me, what do you want? It was a such strong oppression. Everybody was afraid. A Jewish were more afraid than anybody else. Now, here I have such a, a example where you had the participants of the Jewish origin in an underground group. How you can uh, co uh, put these two arguments together? Do you understand what yes, I mean? Yes, yes. Generally, uh, the situation of Jews was terrible, unbearable. But despite these general conditions, there were individuals among the Jews who dared to participate. The same applies also to the Slovak population. It means that uh, only few of them, it means a very small percent, participated actively, actively. Generally, the whole population participated passively, but not actively. And if I am speaking about those Jews who were arrested in connection with uh, Zibrin case, I mention those individuals who dared. Mm -hmm. Who enlisted them? How they were enlisted? I think that either uh, Zibrin enlisted him, them or his collaborators in Slovakia. And what were you think so, as far as you know, what were the uh, reasons why they participated? As I remember, uh, they were... Their time. Uh, yes, they were uh, tried for uh, giving information mm -hmm. of uh, military, economic and uh, political nature. Mm -hmm. They were uh, tried for helping uh, people who escaped from uh, Bohemia and Moravia, it means from so-called protectorate, to Hungary, and in participating in some sabotage actions. And what were the reasons why they uh, went to this? I think uh, conviction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's something else. You mentioned to me that uh, during the uprising, Jewish were uh, Jews were not uh, in a bit, uh, with, uh, were not the leaders. 
between the leaders of this uprising. Now, if you read uh, for sure German description and even the description of the separatists, Slovak separatists in the United States on one side, and I talked to a couple of uh, Jewish, uh, Jews in uh, Israel on the other side, both of them uh, claimed that Jews were between the leaders. Nobody could remember any names. I think uh, we should uh, we should stress in this connection that among the leaders were only few, and it means among the political as well as military leaders, there were only few, maybe 15 or 20. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, quite impossible for the Jewish people to be among those very few, mm -hmm. because it, they couldn't participate and uh, they couldn't expose themselves in such a way that uh, they should play a leading role in such uh, situation. Actually, I remember just one of them, and he doesn't consider them himself Jewish, Slavsky. But he was Czech, and he participated yeah. in yeah. abroad. In yeah, Moscow. and he didn't consider himself. He was considered, he, he, he found his Jewish origin only As in, he was in, 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 in 52. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, may I add something, namely, yeah. that uh, the uh, Jews immediately joined the uprising. It means the military, the uh, guerrilla, and political organization of the uprising. Mm. They were active. Here I have a other question. Most, if I just show you this catalog. Yes. If you go over this catalog, you will find that most of these people participated in the partisan units. And only a smaller, smaller part of them were in the regular army. And I was, uh, I found this even uh, in Israel, and I asked these people, tell me why you were mostly partisans. And they explained to me that, you see, in the regular army was, a, a, or I have to say in other way, we felt ourselves more free and more, uh, we were accepted more as the, the same people without any discrimination in the partisan units more than in the army units. Uh, what would you say about this? No, I don't think uh, that this is the, the correct explanation. Mm -hmm. The real reason why the Jews joint guerrillas, it means partisans, and not the army, was that before the uprising, the Jews couldn't join the army because they were legally excluded. After the uprising, it means after the uprising broke out, There was a mobilization on the uh, Slovak territory, mm -hmm. uh, on the central Slovakia. And I am sure that also the Jewish soldier wanted to, uh, to join the army. However, we hadn't arms. We had at least 70,000 uh, uh, people in the, uh, in the armed forces, but we hadn't enough arms. Mm -hmm. 
and there and therefore a great part of the mobilized people couldn't be used as a part of regular army. Mm -hmm. As far as guerrillas were concerned, the situation was quite uh, different. Everybody could join the guerrilla, the, the guerrillas before the uprising, because there was uh, nobody was legally excluded to participate in guerrilla, and therefore this was the only possibility for the Jews how to participate actively uh, with uh, arms against the Nazis. Mm -hmm. It means guerrillas, not the army. In the, uh, they were excluded from the army. After the uprising, uh, if they uh, wanted, they couldn't participate because the army hadn't necessarily. I see. Uh, this was, the, I think, the, the important I see. reason. By the way, you say, you say that the Jews were excluded for, from the army actually is not a 100% true. Do you know something about the 6th bat battalion, Shiesti Prapor? Yeah, but you uh, have to bear in mind that this exclusion wasn't uh, made uh, suddenly. It was made progressively. No. At first they were excluded from the uh, combatant uh, units and they remained only in so-called uh, services exactly in, and uh, working units uh, after this they were excluded even from this uh, from those units yeah but and, uh, in 1943 i am sure that there were no more in 40 they were, they were, uh, uh, these units were cancelled in 43, you are right, in 1st yes. of June. But you and see, uh, in maybe even early. No, I, I had yes. uh, yes. documents, I know it. But what is interesting is that in these units, you had underground cells. It's possible, and I, I am quite sure. Uh, no, something else. I ju again jump to the uh, past. You mentioned in your statement here that as you were uh, in prison, you find there are many Jewish in prison too. Uh, what were the uh, reasons for uh, imprisonment? You mean in, in the concentration camp in Ila? Yeah, actually. Uh, according to the order of the Slovak government issued uh, in March 1939, the concentration camp was established uh, for, the, for the potential enemies of the Slovak state. Mm -hmm. And when the gates of this concentration camp were opened, at the end of March 1939, I saw there many Jews. I don't know for what reason they were I put there, whether only because they were Jews or whether uh, because the regime considered them as potential political enemies. I don't know, but they were there, as I was and others, senators, and members of parliament and others. I understand. And now I jump to a question after the war. Uh, you see, I know and I am quite aware about the fact that many Jews after the war described themselves as partisans and they actually didn't participate in, in, in any resistance. And they were uh, very happy to guard this the uh, legitimation 266, you know, what uh, gave them many special rights. Yeah. But on the other side, uh, 
זה Jewish were described by many newspapers as they, see, they took a smaller part in, in the resistance as they could. And I just want to mention a Catholic writer in Catholic Skenovini. I stop it for a while. Anyway, I cannot remember his name, but you know whom yes, I, 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 I mean. Know. He described. And as far as I remember, General Ambrush described. Uh, and other, and even Perot in the uh, newspaper, uh, in the periodical of Perotka, where a public uh, discussion about the participation of Perotka in Czechia, actually, yes. but, you know, about the Jewish participation in the resistance, and uh, there were many uh, people who uh, accused Jewish that they didn't participate or participated in only in a smaller uh, degree as they could. What is your opinion today about this? After all you to told me, I want to uh, make this statement with the... Uh, It is quite possible that there were individuals who tried to magnify their services during the uh, World War II in the uh, underground movement. However, it wasn't a, a phenomenon of Jewish population only. The same was made by Slovaks, Czechs and others its so-called opportunism. Yeah. Everybody tried to, to fructify uh, his services. Not everybody, but there, there, Then, were, yeah. there were Czechs, Slovaks, Jews and the Hungarians. Everybody wanted to, to look much better than him. But this is one side of the picture. The other side of the picture is the accusation. Are the accusations that they didn't participate in? didn't participate. No, I don't consider it, it as just. Mm -hmm. I consider it as, uh, as uh, a, an, an unjust generalization. Mm -hmm. Even though it is possible that uh, there were also Jews who wanted to uh, magnify their services, but it cannot be said Generally. You see, no, I would say that uh, I have no more questions. Would you like to say to uh, add something from uh, your opinion, something generally? As far as Jews are concerned? Yeah, all, on all this, you know, all this question altogether, what I ask you, if you want to something say or... Uh, no. I think that the tragedy of Jews in Slovakia was of such an extent that I, I have always wondered how they could survive not only survive, but to think to participate in such a dangerous undertaking as anti-German anti underground was concerned. Therefore, in my opinion, uh, the Jewish population during World War II contributed very much to our uh, liberation movement much more than their, uh, than their numerical uh, possibilities allowed them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that the whole underground movement was a spontaneous Uh, expression 
of all oppressed to change uh, the horrible development uh, created in Munich and after Munich. And the Jewish population as uh, liberally and democratically minded contributed to this uh, change of political picture in Czechoslovakia or Slovakia during World War II. Now, I have no more questions. I just wanted to express my great appreciation for your word and for uh, that you uh, was ready to give your time and, uh, and your readiness to uh, participate in, in this uh, uh, action of uh, collecting of testimonies. Thank you very much. You're very welcome and I consider that it is my duty to contribute to your work and I wish you every success and I hope that we shall cooperate in Thank the future. Thank you very much.